Wall Street Journal is reporting uh, within the past couple of moments here uh, that the U.S. Virgin Islands has issued subpoenas uh, this week to Sergey Brin. In today's video, we begin with a Wall Street Journal report that says Sergey Brin, the co-founder of Google, has returned to the company in a major way. Now, Sergey and co-founder Larry have never been fully disengaged, even after they left their main day-to-day -day executive leadership roles. First, let's see. Who's Sergey Brin? And what is he really doing with Google? On August 21, 1973, Sergey Brin was introduced to the world in Moscow, Russia, within the folds of a mathematical family. His parents, both scholars in mathematics, fostered a home environment that was deeply entrenched in academics and intellectual pursuits. His father, a professor at the University of Maryland, and his mother, a researcher at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, offered him a valuable introduction to the realms of academia, innovation, and scientific inquiry. The Brin family immigrated to the United States when Sergey was six years old. Brin pursued his undergraduate studies in mathematics and computer science at the University of Maryland before embarking on his journey to Stanford University for his PhD. Destiny crossed his path with Larry Page, a moment that was set to redefine the face of the internet forever. Brin and Page discovered a shared vision to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. In 1996, Brin and Page started working on a research project called Backrub, which focused on developing a search engine that analyzed the relationships between websites based on their backlinks, considering these links as indicators of popularity and relevance. As part of the Backrub project, they devised an innovative algorithm called PageRank, which assigned a numerical value to web pages based on the number and quality of links pointing to them. This approach aimed to deliver more accurate search results by prioritizing pages of higher importance. In September 1998, they decided to rename their search engine from Backrub to Google. The name was derived from the term Google, which represents the number one followed by 100 zeros signifying the vast amount of information they aim to organize and make accessible. To launch Google, they received their first funding of $100,000 from Andy Bechtelsheim, co-founder of Sun Microsystems. This encouraged them to establish Google Inc. as a company and start developing their search engine further. Although it began as a simple search engine, Google soon revolutionized the digital landscape. It made information accessible like never before, rendering physical boundaries irrelevant. Under the visionary leadership of Brin, Google expanded its portfolio with innovative offerings such as Gmail, Google Docs, and Google Maps. Brin's leadership was characterized by his audacious ambition to push the boundaries of technology. Google's ambitious projects, including Google Glass and driverless cars, were born out of his relentless pursuit to innovate and challenge the status quo. Brin later decided to step back from the daily operations of Google to focus on pioneering moonshot projects under Alphabet Inc. In 2015, Google was restructured into Alphabet Inc., where Brin served as president. This restructuring allowed Google to streamline its core internet business, while Alphabet took charge of various ambitious forward-looking projects. On August 10, 2015, Larry Page and Sergey Brin made Sundar Pichai the CEO of Google. At first glance, it seemed like the duo just wanted to play a more hands-off role at the company. While Sundar handled all of the day-to-day -day nuances of running Google, Larry and Sergey could focus on the long-term future of the company. But just four years later, in December of 2019, Larry and Sergey would make Sundar the CEO of Alphabet itself, and they would more or less fall off the grid completely. Brin participated in meetings about AI at Google's offices late last year, but the frequency and intensity of his involvement have picked up, according to people familiar with the matter. Artificial intelligence has always been an area of interest for Sergey Brin. 
However, in the face of emerging competition, Brin's interest in AI has become more than an academic exercise. In 2023, OpenAI, a small San Francisco company, released ChatGPT, a revolutionary chatbot capable of explaining complex concepts and generating ideas from scratch. This breakthrough posed a significant threat to Google's $149 billion search business and prompted Brin and Google's other founder, Larry Page, to re-engage with Google to devise strategies to tackle this new challenge. Sergey Brin is working on Google's forthcoming AI model, Gemini, according to journal sources. It sounds like Sergey is involved in technical matter discussions, one of which is loss curves, which is a way of measuring an AI program's performance over time. Gemini, says the journal, is Google's attempt to build a general-purpose AI that can rival GPT-4. The project is being overseen by Demis Hassabis, who's the CEO of DeepMind, which was recently blended with another Google group to be the singular AI body within the company. You have to think that between OpenAI's continued development and Meta's announcement this week of their commercial Llama 2, which by the way was announced with a big partnership with Microsoft, there's gotta be a lot of internal pressure at Google right now. Next up, one of the big themes of this year has been the constraints of AI computers. One of the companies that is trying to challenge them is called Cerebris, and recently, they announced something they call Condor Galaxy One. It's a four exaflop AI supercomputer. Now, as part of the announcement, they also shared that G42, a UAE-based company, was ordering three of the Galaxy One systems with an option to buy six more. But in the meantime, senators continue to roll out more specific AI bills as well. Pennsylvania Democrat Bob Casey introduced two new bills yesterday that both deal with artificial intelligence in the workplace. These developments underscore the importance that Brin places on AI and his belief in its transformative potential. Google entered a code red state, initiating new AI projects and accelerating existing ones. The company planned to introduce more than 20 new products and a new version of its search engine with integrated chatbot features. Google also intended to unveil AI tools for software developers and other businesses, such as image creation technology, to boost its cloud division's revenue. It was also working on tools to help businesses create their AI prototypes in internet browsers. Despite these efforts, however, Google's technology still lagged behind OpenAI's self-reported metrics for identifying content that is hateful, toxic, sexual, or violent. Through his life, Brin demonstrates that there are no limits to human ingenuity. Let's cross our fingers for Brin's return to his base and his new ideas. Thanks for watching. Do like our videos and subscribe to our channel for more videos.